It may have taken a couple of years, but lightning has struck twice. Here at the... Okay, that's too much draw, guys. <laughs> Obviously, a little bit too much draw. Gosh, a ground fault circuit would have solved this instead of the flashing lights. Well, anyway, instead of a short circuit, we are at the short circuit. The home of the Thunderbolts. That's the name of the track, by the way. My name is Greg Woods. We came to short circuit for the first time back in the first season of Marbula One, and back then the eight turn track didn't seem like it was gonna be that complicated, at least looking at the layout. However, it made up for it in action and difficulty around the circuit, and it's only gotten a bit trickier. You see that far chicane, the curbs gone that caused so many issues, but that short straight down to the front stretch, that has added a helix, just to mix things up a bit. We get our first look at the newly reconfigured short circuit with Pinky Toe heading down now to kick off qualifying, if you will. This is a marble that has not qualified in the top 10 in any race so far. Got close to 12th back at Misty Mountain, but dead last the last time out at the Mo Motorway. The benchmark time, 23968. Farther up ahead, Bolt is on track. A marble that did make it into the top 10 once back at Mellow Meadows, whose teammate performed very well here back in season one. The Thunderbolts' hopes are going to be carried to provisional P1. The crowd will be watching that position very closely because only the top 10 will make it out of Q1. 11th down to 20th, they will be eliminated and slot into those grid positions for the race. Alpine comes across in third. Yallop, though, is purple through the first sector. That's fastest of any marble. Best qualifying of 12th at Mellow Meadows. Otherwise, it's been bottom of the order. And a lot of time lost in the second sector yields a tentative last place for now, 24.862. Boy, we saw massive splits back at the Stardust Accelerator in qualifying. Better part of 10 seconds. Here, we're already a little over one with just four runners. Wuspy comes across now in fifth. That sets the time a bit slower. 25-2 is last place among them. Mocha weaving through now. Every qualifying has been in the top 10, including two starts of 10th, but this time in the middle of the order who have run thus far. Minty Flav taking an inside line, working through that second sector. Through the helix with about a second to try to make up. Mocha, fourth place qualifying. Minty Flave comes across in fifth. Bumble now for the Bumblebees. Marble that did finish second at the Honey Dome. But is weaving back and forth on the straight here. Lost some time doing so and comes in fourth. We're nearing the midway point of qualifying with another marble that performed very well the last time we were here, and that is Speedy. Last time out at Stardust, sixth place qualifying. Speedy knocks Bolt off the top spot here and goes P1. Top 10 will advance to Q2 in a three-lap shootout to decide pole position. And you see the importance of that helix. Depending on the line you take, you get the inside line or the outside line through that final turn. Shimmer for the Shining Swarm comes across. As we have reached the midway point of Q1. Ready to kick off the second half. That's Dash, our winner, back at the Mo Motorway. Qualifications of 9th, 15th, 6th, and 5th. A marble that has gained a grand total of zero positions from starting spots to finishing spots thus far this season. Needing to make up time here. Coming down this final straight. Ninth. That means that Shimmer is eliminated. Speedy is safe, but all eyes are going to be watching Smoggy here because the next marble that does not qualify in the top 10 or really doesn't knock Bolt off of that second spot, Bolt is safe for the Thunderbolts. Smoggy coming across the line, 11th. Bolt is safe. That was after a very fast first sector, and Smoggy could not put it together 
be the final couple. Mallard through now in ninth. That is in the bottom of the top 10. No, not safe by any means. Billy, of course, teammate for Mallard, won the last race at Stardust Accelerator just a week ago. Nemo out now. Top qualifying of sixth. Comes through and will not advance. Pinky Toe and Alpine are safe. Prim, who slowed out of that helix. Only two hundredths down in the second sector. Coming across the line, third. Safe and a good run. 23.39 is our top time. 25.5 the slowest. Cosmo through the outside line in the final turn. Weaving down the front stretch. A couple of bumps against the wall. Does not go terribly well. Royal. Through the final turn. Well over a second and a half off for the marble that was a pole sitter back at the O-Raceway and will come no closer than 12th here. Clutter for the balls of chaos, pole sitter and race winner at Misty Mountain, but needs to find a second. That was an audibly hard hit against the wall, but it was a good third sector, and Clutter will advance. Seventh, that is good enough to survive. Minty Flav and Yellup still yet to find safety. What can Clementon do for the O'Rangers? Goes sixth, and Yellup is gone. Now Red Eye. Our final runner, Minty Flav. Wondering if Q2 is in the future. Red Eye, quick through the first sector, slow through the second. And goes purple in the third to salvage an advancement to Q2. Wow. Talk about clawing that one back. One of the top marbles this season found a way to move on. Pulling double duty after last week at the Stardust Accelerator. Pole position there, but a disappointing run in the race. Able to come back up to eighth. It's certainly not the wire to wire. Mellow Meadows pole to, oh, come on. Really, again? All right, lights are on. And I mean that in general, not for the start of this Q2 shootout. Hopefully we'll have enough power here, guys. I get celebration, all right. <laughs> The home marble starts in second. What will it be? And falls back to third through the first two turns. Into the drop. Bolt trying to pick up some pace, but has Alpine hounding behind. Here comes Bolt to the inside. Can't make that move there. Speedy closed the door and holds the lead, but this helix could shake things up. No, the top two following the same line with each other. It'll be a draft fest down the front stretch. Speedy a bit harder on the wall than Bolt. One step apart through the first lap. And the shootout for pole around the two right-handers they begin. Five, six lengths apart. Speedy and Bolt. Then it's Alpine, Prim, Pinky Toe, Clutter, Red Eye, Clementon, Bumble, and Mocha, who switched spots at the bottom. As I say that, there was a move attempt for Bolt, but that one also didn't stick. And as a result, starts going backwards, does Bolt, into the clutches of Alpine. Watch Prim there, trying to catch a draft down the straight. Alpine has done it and will be on the same step as Bolt. Heading into the final lap, Speedy has already started in the run for pole. Bolt falls to sec falls to third, rather. Tries to have a go at second, misses the speed boost, and that may be it for this attempt. We'll have to see, oh no, Bolt having more trouble. Falls back to fourth, now fifth. Gets one spot back, but this will not be pole position for Bolt and the Thunderbolt. Speedy in the meantime is already gonna cross the line and has pole position in front of Alpine. Bolt does recover and will start on the second row, narrowly edging Pinky Toe. Talk about a frenetic final lap of Q2. I hope we get to see some replay. Speedy gets three points, Bolt does get one, Alpine two. Well, maybe there's not enough power for replays. Maybe that's all going to the celebration for getting up there in third, as you see the race entrance for this one. And we will see how it shakes out for tomorrow's race here at the ever entertaining Short Circuit. Well, can we call in an electrician, get this back in order?
That is a mesmerizing lightning tower. Well, thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you for the Grand Prix tomorrow.